Hi, I'm Zen, and welcome to this nice and quick video on dealing with the annoying JavaScript cannot do X of null error, where X can be anything like adding an event listener or adding a style, accessing the property, etc., etc. And on the screen here, we have a perfect example of it cannot read property add event listener of null. So, this is one of those I wish I knew this when I started programming type of video. So, if you're new to JavaScript, this video is defo for you. So, without further ado, let's get into it. There's not much housekeeping to this video as it is a sort of standalone one. However, if you are completely new to this channel but want to have the same setup as me, then please look at the Get the Site series link showing up on your screen right now. That will sort you out with a local web server and the pen drive applications that I use. The resources that you need to follow along with this video are in the description below, but it is essentially just a couple of web pages with some JavaScript files attached to them. I'm using the login page from the Into the Wild demo site just because I have it lying around. Right, so there are basically two causes for this error. The first one is just a normal sped in referencing error, which we'll look at later. And the second, which we're going to be focusing in this video, is the DOM initialization error. The DOM initialization error happens to web developers when they move from setting their event handlers from the HTML into the JavaScript file. What do I mean by this? Well, let us have a look. So here we are in the login all.html and we'll come down to the button for the registration. And here you can see the on click attribute where we are firing the JavaScript function called check reg. And we've added a return to pause the form from actually submitting the data. So essentially we are attaching the JavaScript command to call the function in line with the HTML within the button itself. And here is the JavaScript function that it will end up running. We can see that this is just a starter file with the start of some validation in there. Now, technically, there is nothing wrong with this idea, and it works absolutely fine. When I run this and I click it, click the button, we'll see that this code will in fact come up. And to prove it, here we are. We can see the form here. You can see it's login old. And when we click register, we can see we're getting all the console log information coming out. So it does work absolutely fine. This method did, however, start to become frowned upon sometime in the 2010s because, as I said before, we're actually physically inserting JavaScript into the HTML page. And that breaks what people call the separations of concern mantra and a few other issues of breaking a little bit of teamwork. So we had to move the handling from the HTML file to the JavaScript file. So here we are in the login.html and we can see we have the same button here, but without the on click attribute. So we click over to the JavaScript file for that. And here we can see the addition of the event listener. This code is fairly straightforward. We can see that we are using JavaScript to identify the element of the register button. And then we are adding the event listener uh, to the click command to run the function check reg. So that should all work nice and dandy. However, when we run it, we find the problems. And this is a file. And you can see even before I actually click on the register button, we see the error already up here. And when I press this, we get the page not working error and a few other bits and pieces. But it is this original error, cannot read property event listener of null, which is the problem. Now, as I said, you know, people look at this and think, oh, it's probably just a spelling error referencing if I've got the values wrong. So we go and check that. This is one we should be looking at. And we can see we've got the class of form sub. So we have a look in the JavaScript. And in fact, in this case, we do have an error because it's register submit here. So we'll change this. And it's actually a bit worse than that because this is actually saying get element by ID. Whereas in the code, it is actually a class of form sub. So we have to update the JavaScript for that anyway. Since I know there's only one element with the class of form sub, we can just use the query sector rather than get them by ID. Notice we put the dot in there because it is a class. So again, we then save this all. And uh, we try it again. So we save it all, we go back to the page, and we're going to do a hard refresh here, doing the control and F5, rather than just pressing the F5 to make sure it does refresh all of the files, rather than just relying on the cache. And we can see we still get the same error. Now, we've checked. We know our reference is correct. So where is this darn error coming from? Well, let's have a look at the network tab and refresh the page. 
So here we are on the network tab. We're just going to again do a control F5. And here we see all of the information about how quickly the page was downloaded. We can see that forms.js, the JavaScript file that we're using, was 914 bytes and it downloaded in 13 milliseconds. Okay, and we can get a little bit more information there, but essentially 13 milliseconds uh, is what it says. In fact, total time 1647. However, when we come down here, we can see that the DOM loaded in 65 milliseconds, the page finished loading at 136 milliseconds, and everything was done and dusted at 146 milliseconds. So you might be thinking, well, so what? What of it? Well, it is the DOM here that is the issue. The DOM stands for Document Object Model, and it is a huge topic on its own, but in a nutshell, it's a way that the browser organizes the web page in a tree-like model. So if we jump back to Visual Studio Code and actually have a look at the HTML, we can see that the HTML is in fact a tree-like structure, parent-child relationships. And we can see this by moving to the side here and we can actually collapse the parent of the section. And we can see that essentially HTML is the root tag of them all. And then we have the head section here, which has all the stuff that doesn't get seen, but it's important. So all of our style sheets and our um, JavaScript files. And then the body has the tree of all of the visible stuff. And within that, we've got children, for example, with the wrapper, which holds everything else. And then we have the nav, which you can see holds all of the links. And of course, I could go on and on throughout the whole page on this. Well, it takes the browser a little time to not just read, but also map out these relationships so that they can be read, used, and modified. And that is the problem. You see, when it read the JavaScript file at the 30 millisecond point, it tried to run it at the same time. And since the JavaScript references and uses that DOM model to find the elements, hence document get element by ID that we've seen before and query selector, when it tried to look at the non-existent DOM model for the button, it just got a reply that said, look, it ain't there. So how do we fix this? There are a few ways, but the most popular solution is to use another event listener but this time on the browser window. Now, if you search this online, you will find a lot of people that say, all of this should be done on the document itself and not on the window. But my answer to that is, in my personal experience, when I do things with the document like this, it sometimes fails, but it doesn't fail on the window. You know, your mileage may vary, but at least you know you can try it on the window and document and see what works for you. So let's get this code in there. So I've just zoomed in so we can see the code a bit better, but this is essentially all it is, this line, and of course it's closing brackets. So window add event listener load function E. And this is really all that is required. Now, for those who do know a little bit of JavaScript, you may be thinking, well, can we not use an arrow function instead of this? And you can absolutely, and that will look like this. If you don't know what an arrow function is, then don't worry. Is a kind of advanced stuff, and there will be a video coming on that at some point. If I've done it, hopefully I've remembered to add a card to the video about an hour for it. But if you don't know what an arrow function is, don't worry, you can use either system that I just showed you. Now, again, people who have done this before, they may say, well, why are you using load when you could actually do one specifically for the DOM, which again would look something like this, and all it is, is that we have just changed the actual trigger event, which is, you know, having the DOM loaded is really what we're waiting for. And doing it this way is absolutely fine, and it would technically be a fast way to arm your page, as it were. But assuming that you have optimized your site well enough, and it isn't having to download megs and megs of data, it shouldn't really make a huge difference to the average person. What is the difference? Well, Okay, the DOM content loaded is exactly that. Once the DOM has been loaded and passed, so the browser understands it, that is when this event would be triggered. Whereas using load will actually wait for all of the images and the frames and the style sheets and all the scripts, etc., etc., etc. 
So like I said, if you've got a very large complicated page with a load stuff being downloaded, then using the DOM content loaded would be a better idea. But for small lightweight pages like we've got here, load or DOM content loaded will both work just as well. And before I forget, do notice the capital letters. They do matter. Okay, DOM content loaded with a lowercase l will not work on some browsers. So make sure you get these capitals correct. So the next thing you'll probably be asking is, well, what the heck is this E? And that is a very good question. And as you can see here, even VSC knows what it is. E is the event. It is declared, but it is never read. What does that mean? Well, it allows us to actually send this over to our other functions. So for example, in check reg, I can now put in the letter E here and it will be sent from this function. And then it allows us to do things based on that. For example, if we scroll down to the bottom here, we can now add this little command here at the bottom, which actually stops a form from being processed, stops it being sent. And we'd want to do this while we are checking out a form and uh, doing our validation so it doesn't keep trying to send it. And by the time we finish this actual form, we would then create an if statement to say that if everything's okay in our form, allow the form to proceed. But if there's an error, then we want to run this piece of code to stop it from sending it. So the proof is in the pudding, as we say in the UK. Let's see if it works. Here we are back in login.html. Let's do a hard refresh. Let's go back into console. Let's clear the console. And let's just press this button. And I still get the error, and it is from line two. So I have done something wrong. Let's have a look. And I see what it is straight away. Well, actually, I lie. I had to go and double check. I should have put in a double underscore there, as it is in here. Okay, form double underscore sub. So that is the second type, and we're going to see that again in a moment. So I now fix that. Let's go back, let's clear it, let's do a hard refresh. We're not worried about the favorite icon thing, so don't worry about that. Now let's press register, and it has worked. We can see we get some information, but we then get into another error. So this is another referencing error. And we can see it cannot read property value of null. Okay, now the names of the files here are a bit messed up because we're using the live server within Visual Studio Code. If we were using a web server, we would get the proper file names. And to prove that, we shall do that. So here we are using the Laracon web server. You can see it's a slightly different address. And so now when we click register, you can see here we do get forms.js line 13. And just compare it to the other one, you can see it's still line 13, but this is VM 22. So this is where sometimes using a proper web server is a little bit better. So it's line 13 that we need to look at the code. So here we are at line 13, and we can see it is this console log for first.value. And this is where people who are new to programming freeze. Because they'll look at this and go, well, this first.value is absolutely right. I can see, spelt the... Um, object correctly and I've accessed the correct attribute to it. So this should work. What? Why doesn't this work? The thing is, the answer here is simple. If we go back and actually look at the error again, it does say cannot read property value of null. So what does that actually mean? It's not saying that it doesn't think this is correct. It's saying that whatever this is pointing to is not correct. Now the problem is we didn't declare first here we declared it somewhere else. Now, obviously in a big program, this could be many lines, maybe even hundreds of lines further up the code. In this case, it is directly above us. So the actual error lies with line 12, not line 13. And this is where a lot of people, like I said, do get confused. And so what we've got to say to ourselves is, well, what it's saying is that where we think this is pointing to, which is this here, it's saying it does not exist. So we have to go and check this reference. So we're looking for something called first. So we go and look into our code and we know what we're looking for. It's gonna be the first name. And we can see here, it's actually called reg first. So this is why we have the error. And so we can copy that. We can push that back into here. And now we have the correct reference. So hopefully when we save this, we should get 
the correct answer when we try our form again. Okay, let's just do a hard restart like we've done before. Let's clear the console and we press register. And now we can see everything's coming out. Now this blank line is because there's nothing in first. So if I put something in there, press register, we can see here it is that it has actually done exactly what we want it to. And I say those are the two major issues that people have when they come across this cannot access something of null. Now, although your particular scenario when you come across this error will be slightly different, the idea and the solution will be exactly the same. The only other issue I can think of that you'll get this is something known as a scope issue. And this is a huge topic and probably another video that's on my to-do list. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss it. But that means my work here is indeed done. So if you think I've earned a thumbs up because I found something that you felt you really needed, please give me that like. Please also subscribe. It really helps to promote my channel. And I am still starting out, so I'd really you know, really, really appreciate if you would uh, subscribe. Um, but that being said, thank you for seeing me all the way. Remember, if there's a video you want me to do, something you want me to cover, or you want to ask me anything, just whack it in the comments. I do read every single comment, and I try my, my best to reply to them all. So see you guys next time. I'm Zen, signing off.